Hello, I wanted to make some quick comments about uh, NDCG. I mentioned in the last uh, video that the version that I showed you wasn't from the original paper. Uh, there's actually been several versions floating around um, over the years. The original comes from Sigai R, I've written down here, 2000, which I actually don't believe. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doubting myself so quickly. Um, just a moment here. Yeah, no, 2000 is what it was. All right, sorry. Um, CR 2000, when uh, Jarvelin and Kekka Leinen and Uh, published this uh, ground-breaking uh, new measure, uh, you know, big thing taking into consideration user behavior and also the notion of graded relevance rather than binary relevance. Um, and so their formulation looked as follows in the paper. Uh, at rank I, so... Uh, When i is 1, at rank 1, you get back the gain value of that document uh, no matter what. There's no discounting. So we're basically saying, yes, the user absolutely, positively sees it. And then we have a recurrence here. Uh, for those of you who recall these from your algorithms and data structures courses, uh, we have the following. So if it's not rank 1, it's the, sorry, that's i minus 1. It's got to be set up as a recurrence. It's the previous value plus this rank gain uh, divided by log to a base b. Uh, so this is our discounting as the user goes down the rank list. There's less and less uh, value to it. Now, the thing here that's so fascinating is that they did in the original paper give uh, uh, this as just simply a base B with the idea that you could adjust the base B based upon what degree of discounting you wanted to have. So they actually had put into place a means to calibrate it against actual user uh, behavior data and that's really neat. That's something that's been lost in most of the uh, current versions, people just simply seem to use uh, log base 2. Um, anyway, so you go ahead and you can rewrite this uh, occurrence so that you actually have it as a summation. We go from, so at rank 1 again, you get that gain, and then from the other ranks down to your rank P, you take your rank, take your gain, sorry, and you discount it. All right, uh, and this is, uh, this works for P greater than or equal to one, which I guess is all this. Then, then in 2000, they had a journal paper which wrote all this up again in 2002. It's probably more cited than the original SIG-IR paper. Uh, it's a very complete treatment of everything, and it has the exact same formulation. All right. And so, yeah, you're like, okay. So, yeah, that's not quite what I had and not what I said NDCG is, and it is not the same as what's in the Croft textbook. Uh, the Croft uh, Metzler Stroman textbook. Croft Metzler Stroman uh, have that same thing, but they very explicitly set it to be uh, log base 2. So it's no longer parameterized. They set it as log base 2. Then they have a footnote. And so in this footnote, they go and they say, hey, 
you could you can also see it written often like the following where they take two and raise it to the power of the gang they don't specify what the basis of the log all right what is it it's probably two Okay, that's my guess is what their assumption is uh, to follow what the other notation was. And then they say, oh, when gain values are binary, this behaves the same as the other formulation. Well, again, remember the other formulation. So let's say, let's say, by the way, we had the following results. We've got a rank and we've got a gain. And at rank one and two, we go zero and one. Okay. And, and I'll just say that there's zeros forevermore in the game. All right. So you only have a gain of one. There's only one found relevant document and it's at rank two. The former, the first formulation would give you then, so uh, we get the gain that we get at rank one. So that's zero plus we go ahead and we take two to raise to the power. That's one minus one divided by log. Let's say it's base two. It is base two all over. Uh, and this is I. Okay. Very good. Then the second formulation up here, we, or the footnote formulation. All right, we come into here at rank one, we've got two to the zero minus one all over log base two of one plus one. Plus then at rank two, we've got two to the one minus one all over log base two of one plus two. All right, so this guy, so let's actually, this is not I there. Let's go ahead and this is two. So log base two of two is one. This is two to the one, that's two minus one, that's one. So all of this turns into one. So this first formulation, um, which is the main formula in the Croft textbook, gives you a gain of one. This formulation, so that's one minus one, so that becomes zero. This one, two to the one, two, that's uh, one, divided by log base two of three. So this all equals one over log two of three, which is not equal to one. So their footnote saying that it's exactly the same for um, binary relevance is unfortunately easily shown not to be the case, so don't get confused by that. Um, I think the feeling was, and what, probably what the actual intent was to communicate, were that the gains up here, this, this part is the same for binary as other, you know. Other formulation. So we're, what, whatever we put for the gain at that rank is the same if we're doing binary. And I think that's what the intention of the footnote was. It wasn't that the entire formulation, the entire DCG is identical, but that the gain values at those given ranks are identical if it's binary uh, relevance. And that's that's certainly true. Now. Where did these other alternative uh, formulations of DCG pop up? Well, these appear to have all stemmed from work of Burgess uh, uh, back in 2005. Uh, ICML paper. And in there, the summation is from rank one to P. We've got 
2 raised to the power of g sub i minus 1 all over log of 1 plus i. And again, we don't see what this is specified as, but we'll assume that's 2. It's very common for computer scientists to assume it's the base is 2 when not given, because um, everything is binary, and so base 2s are very common. So we'll assume it's 2. Uh, so that's their formulation, uh, and that's that. Be, what's fascinating about it, this is where it seems to be, was the introduction of this raising uh, to the power. Now Burgess et al., uh, at the time, and maybe still now, I don't actually know Burgess, uh, he worked for uh, Microsoft. So they're involved in training uh, a, Microsoft has always used at their core a neural net for ranking of their search results, uh, at least as far as we know. I've never been privy to the, the source code for it. And basically, um, they're doing, so they're doing, they're going to use NDCG for training this system. And they also, they've widely published that they use these graded relevance from 1 to 5, where 5 actually is only for navigational queries. So if we go uh, 2 to the gain, all right, and we've got a gain. So we've got gains of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 2 to the gain minus 1. So that ends up being zero still. All right, that ends up being one. So that's four minus one is three. That's eight minus one is seven. That's 16 minus one is 15. That's 32 minus one is 31. Now, so basically what we really see here is, whoa, First of all, clearly, gain this graded relevance. This is not a human notion of necessary value. It really is a way to sort of try to communicate, you know, a gain of four is better than a gain of three is better than a gain of two. It's actually recording uh, notions of preferences. It's not actual value. All right, um, and indeed, this formulation then, what we see here when they go and they take the gain values as such, is in effect to really be like, you know what? These navigational results are really important and we gotta get them right. So we gotta be able to give feedback when we're training our neural ranker so that it actually will go and understands that a navigational result with, of which there's only one answer is really important. And we want it to see that it needs to get it at the top of the rank list. So let's, let's make that worth double what a regular uh, excellent search result is uh, for the query. Okay, so there's only one navigational result, or maybe there's only a couple, and they all lead you to the, the exact same place. But basically, this is really important, and we need to be able to, the algorithm to see it. And in indeed, this whole thing here is basically saying, uh, this wasn't enough, so to speak, for the training of the net, or for giving a proper signal to the system, um, to evaluate differences between search systems. So let's, let's amp it up. Let's really make it clear that we prefer this, the navigational result, to an excellent and so forth on down. Uh, we, need, we need a stronger signal because indeed uh, NDCG is not, while it m compares you to the ideal ranking, and you're going to maximize your score by getting it in, the, in an order where you put the most valued first, there's a, you know, when there's only these small differences, there's quite a bit of squishiness. You can rearrange things and it won't change your score that much. 
but you rearrange these big values once you've got this discount in place and not getting them in the right order can produce very significant changes in your actual rankings. All right, so in the value of your rankings as computed by NDCG. And so this to me is really to say, we really need to coax NDCG into paying attention to our preferences. Uh, there is some recent work by uh, Charles Clark. Uh, I've collaborated with him and uh, some other authors uh, on this work. He's been working on, uh, we've been publishing a measure called compatibility and compatibility actually pays attention to the rank order and preferences of people. And so it, it gets rid of uh, this notion of trying to talk in terms of gains and instead it just pays directly to the preferences expressed between documents. Um, now, since it's so cutting edge, I'm not gonna get into it. Maybe if we have more time at the end of the course. All right, so one last thing. So that was what Burgess did. And so what really is sort of the accepted? And I, I really feel that uh, the accepted note version of NDCG is in Trekaval because it's so widely available with that uh, source code and program and people can use it and refer to it and we all can agree. And so it ends up being just, it gets rid of the two to the power and it goes ahead and does the following. So we see Burgess-like result here, but this is just plain taking the gains and the notion is with this, you know, you know, control this in your QRLs. So if you had assessors grade things on a scale from one to five, and you really wanted to evaluate your runs with two raised to the power of the game, just change your, create a new QRLs file and you'll produce new gain values, and then you can run that through Trekaval, and you can do that. So in other words, this basically becomes, it's under your control, all right, what you want to do, because you're going to determine the gains for the documents, so that's not a problem. Um, but yes, we're going to use log base 2 in this to do the discounting. So I, I kind of view this as the standard, and it should be what I have actually shown you in the previous lecture.